Slide one. The diversity and ability logo is on the left hand side with text on the right reading active use of technology in the workplace during COVID-19. Atif Chowdhury and Megan Reid. Hello, my name is Atif Chowdhury and I am one of the co-founders of DNA or Diversity and Ability, which is a social enterprise designed to utilise the strengths of lived experiences and assistive technology to make sure that assistive technology is working really well in a meaningful way and supported and delivered by the very people that need to use it. Hello, I'm Megan Reid. I'm the Training and Innovations Lead at Diversity and Ability. And today we're going to be talking to you about active use of technology in the workplace during COVID-19. A quote by Atif Chowdhury, strength of diversity through adversity. So, yeah, that's, I guess that's a way that I would like to sort of culturally sort of hold us today in the space of this talk, the strength of diversity through adversity. So there's so much going on in a pandemic and a global crisis that we're all facing, which I obviously don't need to elaborate today. But very rarely are we looking at what the crisis has shown us that we could have done better upon. Because naturally we're all reacting to it so much. But what we are seeing is a cultivation of so many people working from home because they're forced to. But it's also said to us, look, we could have employed more people working from home before, before the crisis. Perhaps as you can understand, in 2019, we could have had more people with physical uh, challenges and difficulties, and more disabled experiences also working for us, not necessarily being tied to the office every day or feeling that they've got to commute every day, but certainly bringing the ingenuity of who they are and the strengths of their own experiences and the very ability to do the job that we all ask people to do. So with that, I hope that we take this presentation and move it to a space that looks at how agile technologies can change and communicate us to all be a lot stronger and supportive of each other and what things we need to safeguard to make sure that when we are working online, we're doing it really well and we're noticing the things that often get missed. For sure. And I guess in the future as well, when we are post pandemic, there are so many lessons that we have learned and can continue to learn. That means that we can transfer these processes and these technologies that we've learned about now in 2020 during this pandemic into future work so that our whole workforce can be much more inclusive and accessible. Slide four titled remote communication, the rise of the virtual office. The slide shows the logos of common video conferencing softwares, BlueJeans, WebEx, and Whereby, Google Meet, Zoom, Teams, and GoToMeeting. And the main content for this slide is bullet pointed. So we're gonna talk about how remote communication really has driven this rise of the virtual office. And previously, if we think about what our workplaces looked like back in 2018 and 2019, before this pandemic came in, most people were sitting at desks and interacting face to face. But when the pandemic came, this had to change really quickly. And we had to go from having just one or two people working at home as part of an organization to suddenly being nearly 100% everybody working from home. And when we previously thought that there might be barriers around remote communication and remote working, or flexible working patterns, maybe those, um, maybe those perceptions were slightly misguided. I suppose during this pandemic, what we've really learned is that actually working from home, flexible working, remote communication is something that's really viable and definitely something that's accessible and means that more people are able, just as Atif said, are able to work. What's more is by working from home, we can get this really customised office space. If you think about the office when there's lots of people there, quite often you may end up sitting near a printer or you might sit near a group of people and that can be quite loud. And if you're someone who benefits from noise reduction, then working from home definitely allows you to get that really quickly. And ultimately, that means you might be able to work more productively. But I suppose one thing that has come out of this is how do we make these online virtual remote spaces completely accessible for all? Because just in the same way that in the workplace, we had to think about what make, makes a workplace in person truly accessible, we have to have those same conversations about the online space too. We need to think about whether or not somebody's going to be able to see what's going on and is that important? 
or whether or not somebody might need to sit in a different space or a different in a different environment and will they have access to that in their home environments or not and these are all really really big questions and many of these we don't have time to fully answer I suppose in our 10 minute presentation today Asif, but we will try and take you on a short journey about how working from home and using digital technologies in the working from home space has really been quite a good thing. Absolutely. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, so some things to consider. As we are watching so many folks, particularly office workers, um, uh, being able to work from home at times, at times, what are the challenges that are presenting themselves as Megan's touched on? So for example, when we have human conversations, so much of our conversations are about pitch and tone and body language and enthusiasm and eye contact. Now, a lot of those things are compromised. They're nonverbal cues. They, they, have us give, they teach us when we're interacting with people, when is it time to finish a conversation? When is it to start one? How is this person feeling? Are they feeling a sense of confidence and support in their interaction with us today? These things are harder to reach online. They are. And when you're supporting people who have, have say, neurodivergent differences, it could be things around autism or ADHD or dyslexia, uh, etc. It's it can be more challenging, but it doesn't have to be. It's making a, a note to yourself to say, how do you look for the telltale signs that people are feeling included? How are you telling the telltale signs that people are feeling quite reserved or that they're not on camera a lot these days or they're just tired? but they're not able to show that or express that very well. I'm sure over the last, you know, the last nine months of the pandemic, we're all able to come familiar, I guess, with the term zoomed out, you know? And it's, and it's, a, it's a feeling that we all feel at times, but it's recognizing that there's some folks where being online without human interaction can be even more challenging. So it's working that out. The other thing about working and supporting people in a virtual office is to recognize that alongside with the camaraderie and the support that we give to each other when we're in an office building. We are also looking at what is accessible technologies, what has worked well. DNA is an organization that employs a lot of people. We have a disclosure rate as an organization of 85% of pronounced impacts and disabilities. It's a wonderful part of our culture and community, but we also have to recognize that we have to anticipate that it's not easy for people to work from home if there are things like ergonomic desks and settings that they've had in the workplace that it's not easy to move those desks and and chairs and things into their home place it's different so we have to anticipate that and our role here is to keep anticipating that to ask what does it make and what do we need to do to make this easier to ensure that when you are working at home it's not just the same as saying you're working at home you're feeling supported at home and that's that's very very important Absolutely. Slide five, titled Remote Communication Accessibility for All. The same video conferencing logos are displayed along the bottom and the main discussion is bullet pointed. So just as Atif has been saying, there are some things that we need to do, just like bringing desks in, into your home space away from your workplace, that will mean that your online workplace is inclusive and accessible and has got all of those things that you need to allow you to thrive. But some of the really simple things that everyone should be doing as organisations or individuals, whether you're setting up a one to one meeting or you're having a, a conference for your whole organisation. There are some really simple tips and tricks that you could be doing to help improve the accessibility of your meeting. And those are simple things like making sure you're minimising background noise. Nobody really wants to hear next door having their lunch. So try and keep your windows closed, minimise that background noise or turn your microphone off if you're not um, not speaking. Closed captioning and transcripts. This is such a simple thing because it's built in to the majority of um, video conferencing platforms. And you can just enable it by clicking a few buttons. And by turning that closed captioning on, we open up the meeting to so many more people. We have to think about how, if we were in a physical workplace, people would be interacting or communicating in quite different ways. There would sometimes be emails, there'd sometimes be passing conversations next to the water fountain. There would be so many different types of interactions and communications and replicating that in an online space can be quite tricky. But we can think about how you could use an online chat box or a question and answer session, or perhaps you could say at the end of your morning meeting, 
if someone wanted to have that passing conversation they'd have with you when you were both leaving a meeting, you could say to people you're working with, how about I hang around at the end of this meeting and if you have something you'd like to talk to me about, just wait behind tea. Simple things like that that allow us to flex and adapt our communication to meet this online new dynamic. Agendas. Agendas are always quite important. They really set the tone for um, meetings and they give everybody a structure to work through. And lastly, share those meeting re resources in advance. If you um, have slides, please share those in advance. People can have a look at them, look through them, and they can think about questions that they might want to ask either in the chat box or verbally in your meeting. And it's really important to be aware of these different remote communication um, tips and tricks because they can make sure that everybody's able to stay involved and perhaps more people than would have been involved in your in-person meetings will be able to get really engaged and really um, involved in your online space. So I'm going to go to slide six. This is titled Assistive Technology, Individualised Application, Universal Benefits. Again, the main bullet um, content is bullet pointed here. At the bottom of the side, we have a series of cogwheels and all of these have icons within them representing different assistive technologies or communications. So I think one of the biggest things we need to think about is how assistive technology can move towards this online environment. And I'd like everybody to try and um, think about the assistive technology that they may or may not already use in their workplace. Glasses, for example, are a piece of assistive technology, as are mind mapping, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and those spelling, proofreading, or grammar checkers like Grammarly that you might already have installed. Those are all examples of assistive technology. And they aren't necessarily just adaptations for some certain individuals. They're actually quite necessary for everyone to be order, in order to um, allow them to engage in their daily work. Slide seven, titled Work From Home Assistive Technology. A person is working from home looking at a computer screen in the bottom left and is surrounded by seven bubbles representing different assistive technologies. These are from left to right, Zoom video conferencing, closed captions, text-to-speech, emails, mind mapping, glasses and dictation. So this slide really represents an example of how we can be joined up um, in our use of assistive technology when we're working from home. Each day your meetings might be held by Zoom, you might be using closed captions in those Zoom meetings, you might use mind maps to collaboratively generate ideas as a team, you might use text-to-speech to read really long emails or documents that keep coming through, especially when that Zoom doubt or Zoom fatigue starts to rise. You may be wearing glasses, you might be emailing to keep in contact with people, and you might choose to dictate some of those emails instead of type them all. And these, it's really important to note, are not just for people who would identify as disabled or neurodiverse. All of these different pieces of assistive technology are open for everyone, and some would say essential for everyone to thrive in this online environment. On this slide, we can see the journey of change. We have two different pyramids. The pyramid on the left, represents where the current situation is. At the base of the pyramid reads reasonable adjustment. The middle is problematization. And the top of the pyramid is job insecurity. There's then an arrow moving from one triangle to the triangle on the right-hand side. And this at the base reads culture of informed practice. In the middle, universal inclusive design. And at the top, reasonable adjustment. So with these triangles, what we're really trying to show is that there are culture that is probably more common that we're used to, which where organizations say, look, we make lots of reasonable adjustments and we're really open to doing that. And often it can feel like there's nothing wrong with that because it's, it's, it's really looking like a way of saying we're really welcoming people and what adjustments they need. Of course, if you're an organization listen to the, listening to this, you'll naturally think, yeah, well, we do that and that's good. But a question we might ask ourselves is, who wants to be reasonably adjusted? Who on earth would really want to be? It's more we'd want to be welcomed. And if we look at the triangle as we go further up, if the reasonable adjustments aren't working very well, then it becomes a problem and a problematization. Now, it's often worked through, but emotionally and mentally, when these things start looking at your job performance and, and your sense of workplace well-being, and especially when you're working online through the pandemic, 
starts becoming a challenge around insecurity and emotional insecurity and even job insecurity. So you'd be right thinking, well, how do we fix that? Now, in truth, it's a long journey and it's a lot of work that can be embedded into good principles. Um, DNA teaches this quite often, but it's about saying, are we as an organization excited about lived experiences? Do we recognize those lived experiences teach us what that greatness could look like rather than the good enough? So it's a culture of informed practice that says, we are looking at how our staff and our community chooses to disclose and the reasons they, they choose to disclose, rather than just saying it's about job protection. It's really about saying they're excited about the way they learn, the way they experience work and the diversity of thought and the contribution it gives us. So in that sense, cultural informed practice is very, very important. It helps embed an anticipatory welcome that says, we can't know everything and we can't support you all the time when we don't know how you're feeling, but we really want to, and this is how we're inviting that. So a cultural informed practice makes a way for universal or inclusive design. It says this informed practice is teaching us what this workplace could look like, what it should look like. It has no destination, but it is a journey that doesn't ever stop. It's constantly reflecting to say, how do we make this a better place? And how do we make it easier to be here? And what is it we're thinking about? Reasonable adjustment, of course, should be there, but it should be at the right priority at the top of the triangle at the end. So we've got to reasonable adjustment because that person as an individual is still open and able to share what they individually need rather than just what their disability is and how it's the same disability as somebody else. When in fact, the impacts can be completely different. And those impacts can be so different that we need to understand what reasonable changes can we make here to address the specific impact of that specific individual? Slide nine, a quote. When individuals have access to the right tools for them, they not only survive, but thrive. There are also images of a bird in flight and a positive curve on the graph representing an individual thriving. And it really is so true. When we provide support for anyone, regardless of disclosure or not, or sharing their own barriers and challenges, we really enable them to survive and not just thrive in their work, be that in person or remotely. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's really sort of said it there. It is about just doing more than just getting by, but actually being excited about where you are and even taking into account with the global crisis that we're all in, and knowing that we're still included, we're still participating, regardless of the hidden differences, the social barriers, and the way that we're so all individually taking this crisis on uh, as individuals and the ability to try and navigate that space. It's just not easy, but we need to get through it and feel like we're welcomed as we are. Our final slide. The diversity and ability contact information is currently shown on screen. Social media handles are displayed for LinkedIn, which is diversity dash and dash ability. Facebook, which is the at sign DNA matters. Twitter, which is at sign caps D and caps A underscore inclusion. Instagram, which is diversity underscore and underscore ability. And our final contact details, which are email, workplace at diversityandability.com and our website, which is https colon slash slash diversityandability.com. We've had a really great time presenting here. Thank you so, so much for hosting us. I really hope you got something even small or meaningful out of today's presentation. We would love to keep working with you in the future. So do get in touch. Yep, and ditto for me, really. Thank you for everybody for um, to listening and if you're really interested in how to take some of this work further there's some brilliant blog pieces as well as some free resources on the on the dna uh website so thanks to everyone for listening and thanks to the team at achievability for hosting this space and um yeah we really hope it's been useful stay safe everyone and and, and um just be good to each other